Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for clicking and watching. My name is Ree and I typically make fashion and lifestyle videos, but like I say always, I really needed to review season five of Insecure. It's the final season. So this is the fourth episode. Let's get right into it. It's called, what is it called? It's called Faulty Okay. And yeah, let's get into this episode because it was a good one. Honestly, all of these episodes have been really great, um, but I really like this one too. So yeah, let's get into it. Okay, so Nathan's having his party that we saw him speaking to Issa about a few episodes ago. It's a like beach party and everyone's having a good time and I actually love this scene. I don't like talk about every single scene that goes by because you know we all watched it but I just thought it was really funny them all putting on the sunscreen and then the one girl comes and she's just like this is a vino. Like what are you guys doing? This is a vino. And I just laughed because I'm like these guys are really trying. You know they're trying. At least they they're thinking about their self-care and that's important but they didn't get fully there they're putting a vino cream on their body okay so things are weird between Issa and Nathan obviously we left off in I think episode two when um Issa was crying they were about to hook up and then Issa started to cry when they were kissing and yeah and then Nathan left so that's where we ended off. So this is the first time that they're seeing each other since then. And things are awkward. Obviously, Issa's always like awkward and she just does too much as she says too much. And that's what we love about her. She just, she, she doesn't know what to say. And obviously, well, at least I can relate to her when you just keep speaking because you're just like a bit nervous of the silence because something awkward is happening. You're like, maybe if I keep speaking, it's not going to be awkward anymore. And then everyone's just looking at her like, what the hell are you talking about? So yeah, they have like some back and forth. It's really awkward. So then Issa thinks Nathan is with Risha. I think her name is Risha. I can't remember her name. But with the girl who's like really bubbly and stuff, he she thinks he's with her. So she's kind of thinking like, what the hell is going on? She's trying to like figure this out and like, when did this happen? But Issa knows her, but like, you know, it, it hurts when the guy that you're obviously interested is seeing somebody else. So. She, it seems like they are because they're very close. Man's on his knees tying her shoes. She's grabbing up his shoulders. I know I would think that even if I didn't like the guy, I'd be like, what's going on over there? Like something's going on between them. So yeah, Issa thinks that. And then an earthquake happens and just shuts everything down. So everybody has to go. And that's when the food finally came. The food finally came and now everybody has to go. So Nathan definitely didn't want the party to stop because it just started. And he suggested everybody goes to a bar nearby that he really likes. And so everybody goes, which is really nice. Issa's not sure if she wants to go though because she's just like, things are really awkward. And he's also with this girl. Like, I don't know if I want to be there. But Molly has some things happening. She has two guys who are interested in her. And she she's kind of deciding on the two. She wants to have some fun. So... So then Issa's like, yeah, okay, cool, let's go. So they're going to the new place. And I actually like this part. It was um, Nathan talking to his friends in his car. And I just, I think it's really important to see like conversations between men. And I like that because it just gives us women and men and everybody like an insight. But as women, you don't really get to typically see conversations between men, like when the guys are all hanging out. So I like that. And Nathan's just talking about like the situation between what happened with her and him. And he's just kind of thinking like she has no idea what she wants. And I think he just feels dragged along and just confused. And he didn't know what was happening. And he just thought to just like dip out and just leave because he's like, I I don't know why she's crying and I don't even know my place in this. Like I thought we were friends. Like she keeps saying we're friends and then she wants to cuddle. And so it was interesting to hear what his friends have to say. And then they're also talking about Molly. They, they want to get to know Molly a little bit better. So then in the other car, we see that Issa's getting like tweets. She's seen tweets from Crenshaw and they're not good ones. They're obviously after his show. They never really spoke, so I guess she just thought they were good, but he's basically letting it be known that they're not good on social media. 
Let me know what you guys think about that because I think handle your business just between the two of you guys. Like you guys have had a pretty decent relationship before the show and she was just trying to help get your show to be successful. So, and to be seen right like if you got if you didn't make those adjustments even though he didn't but if you weren't playing if she didn't tell the people that you're going to make the adjustments nobody would see your show so i just think going after her on social media is just ridiculous and so you can see that isa's obviously bothered and she's just like she's pissed off because she's like what the hell is this um so then obviously Issa and Molly are texting. Molly asks the girl Risha, Risha, let's just call her Risha because I don't remember her name. But he, she asks the girl like, are you sleeping with Nathan? And the girl's like, no, he's like my brother. Well, that's an interesting sibling relationship, but whatever. So she knows that she, he's not messing around with her. So she feels better about that. And then also I love just the conversation between Kelly and the girl. Risha, I'm just gonna call her the girl. But I love the conversation because we're just getting to know Kelly more. Obviously, during the party, we find out that she's sober now. We also just see her just talking about manifestation, journaling, and just kind of digging deeper and kind of um, just finding herself a little bit more and just kind of going through the journey of, of just self-love, self-knowing, you know, all that good stuff. She's getting deep with the girl in the back of the car. So I like that. I love Kelly, obviously. I think everybody loves Kelly. And I just love that they're they're just creating more layers to her and they're getting us to know her better, which I, I'm just obsessed with. Okay, so now they're at the bar and Nathan and Issa just talk briefly. And I thought this part was interesting because they're talking and she's like, let's just talk about what happened. Let's just kind of clear the air a little bit. And um, he's like, well, I don't, I, I don't remember how the conversation started, but then Issa's like, I guess I just expected you to be there when I woke up. And Nathan's just like, I guess we never spoke about our expectations. Like I, I didn't know we had expectations for one another. So it also showed like Issa's, you know, kind of almost expecting things out of him, requiring things out of him, wanting things out of him. And it, their relationship status is still very unclear are they friends are they acquaintances are they i don't who knows so it was interesting that um nathan said that in response he's just like i didn't know like we had expectations for one another so i like that and then nathan's cousin comes in thomas with his wife velma i think her name's her name is Velma and all this all of a sudden we see kind of it's awkward between Nathan and his wife so we don't know what happened but we're just like there's something there like I feel something and it's not good so anyways but it's really nice again to see Nathan's cousin we're learning more about Nathan and I just like that the cousin seems fun good energy the wife seems fine um yeah but then when everyone's sitting outside grabbing drinks the wife seems to be kind of, you know, going on on Nathan, like saying he's flaky, he's like a leaf. Also, why do we always have to talk about light skin? She's like, he's a light skin leaf. Like, am I the only person that is just like, I think it's too much. Like they're always calling out light skin, light skin, light skin. It's like, it's too much, it's overdone. Just call the boy a leaf. Why do we have to keep talking about his damn skin tone? Um, okay, so they're picking on him and saying like he's flaky, blah, blah, blah. And then Issa stands up for him. And Lisa's just like, did I call her Lisa? Issa. Issa's just like, well, I don't think he's flaky. Like he grounded me and he basically made me think about my life and my future and everything. So I liked what she said. And yeah, she stood up for him and I think he appreciated that too because everyone was kind of dogging him. And he's, look, you're at his function, like he put this on and you're calling the man flaky. Like he's he's obviously doing things with his life. So I don't I don't I also don't like the teasing. I'm just not one for teasing. Maybe I'm insensitive because I'm a cancer, but I just feel like life is hard enough. I don't need to be teased. Just don't tease me. You can make a joke. But like, don't everybody come in like do too much. It's just too much. So, and he obviously didn't like it. You saw his face. Okay, so we see another tweet from Crenshaw and Issa is just like not happy now. He's calling her a fraud. He's just calling her so many things. So 
Issa's just kind of thinking what the hell's going on. So Issa hits back and she's just like, she says something like, um, this is an interesting way to say thank you for somebody who helped your shit like be seen. What do you guys think about that? Like, obviously you want to stand up for yourself when things are going down, but also you're a professional and you're creating a whole brand. So you can't always just hit back like how he can. Like you have contacts and everything, you have clients. So I think um, that was not a good look for her. And then her assistant quickly just said like, what was that? Like that was not good. And then it's now too late. Screenshots are taken. Like it's too late for her to take it down. What's done is done. And I think she instantly was just kind of like, why did I do that? But we all know, like, you can only be poked for so long until you're, like, you know, hit back a little bit. And that's what Issa did. But sometimes I think you just, like, silence is better because she knows what she she's what she did. She's helping the guy. Also, people were sticking up for her in the comments. So sometimes you just, like, let that happen. And you just don't need to get involved with that. But she did. And what can she do? Okay, so it seems like Molly picks the Aaron guy, or Eric, I think his name is, out of the two guys because the other guy had to look after his cat and he told the girl to come over. I also don't like that. Don't tell me to come over, I don't know you. Let's like have the moment strike and then I'll come over to your place. But coming up with an excuse, I have to walk my cat or something and why don't you come over and see her? I'm not coming over to your home, I'm not. So she picked the other guy, Eric. Um, I think they call him Arik because his name is with an A, but I'm gonna call him Eric. Okay, so they go and see Jason Derulo. I forgot that guy existed, but I don't really listen to radio music like that, so maybe he's still around. Um, but they go and see him, and then um, Molly gets in. So, yeah, Molly is the only person that gets in. He thought, the guy thought he can get everybody in, did not work out. He only got Molly in. But then Molly was able to get through the back door and let everybody else in. So, um, so yeah, everybody else would be able to get in. But then it seems like Nathan's cousin, Thomas, was just like walking away. Like he didn't even say bye or anything. He just started to walk off. And then Nathan saw him and he's just like, what are you doing, Thomas? Like, you're not even gonna say goodbye. You're just gonna walk away. Like, imagine if you just saw somebody walk away and like, like, oh, let's go. And then someone's just walking off without saying anything. Like, not even saying, okay, guys, like, I'm good. I'm just gonna call it a night. Like, the man just walked away. So he ordered his Lyft. And I wonder if they get a deal with Lyft because they never say Uber. Everything's always Lyft. Everything's always Lyft. They, might, they must have some sort of deal. <clears throat> Anyways, so then Thomas says he's going to go home and Nathan thinks it's because of his wife, Velma, because he thinks that she doesn't want him to hang out with her. All comes about, because then we also find out earlier in the conversation, like um, one of the other scenes, that Nathan used to live with Thomas and his wife and they have some children. So he used to live there before he seemed to move in with Andrew. So now it comes out a little bit more during this conversation. We find out that he was staying with them, but then he got kicked out. And it seems like Valma took the, you know, the short end of the stick and she's like, you can blame it on me. Nathan didn't have things together at the time. He was sleeping on their couch. He was coming in and out whenever he wanted to. He was gone for days, like disappeared for days and then would come back, leave the door unlocked. So I'm sorry, but I wouldn't want him staying on my couch either. When when the guy has kids too, but even if I didn't have kids, I wouldn't want all of that. This is not a drop-in center, sir. It's not a drop-in center. So the man told him that he has to go. So that's when he moved in with Andrew. Andrew, I miss you. Andrew, I miss you. I miss you. But yeah, that's when, because like, why wasn't Andrew at least at his function? I don't think we're going to see Andrew. I thought Andrew would at least show up for the event. Andrew's not in the season anymore. They should have at least just brought him in for that episode. And then Molly and him, it could have been like a little bit of awkwardness or something. We're not going to see Andrew. Anyways, so um, yeah, they speak and then... Thomas said, I, we blamed it on Valma, but honestly, it was me who wanted to go. So Nathan feels pretty like 
wow, like, you know, that was a blow to the stomach to know the truth and to know that your cousin actually wanted you to leave. Like he didn't want you to stay. The wife was okay. And obviously they have a strange relationship now. So he feels like slighted, like, whoa, that that's wild. Um, so then Issa and Nathan start to talk and Nathan feels like, you know, he's done a lot. He's grown, he's changed. And it sucks that, um, Thomas doesn't see that and he just he wants him to see that but then he also realizes you can't you can't choose how people see you like you can only live your life and live your life for yourself and then if pe people see what they want to see too like he may not even want to see growth in him and the fact that he just ordered his lift and left like you're also having a really important conversation right now and he just left so that conversation got cut short so Nathan feels a little bit like and also they haven't even hung out since since he moved in with Andrew so their relationship is very you know it's pretty surface because obviously you know they're happy to see each other but then they know they have real issues um layered down beneath but that's life and that's family am I right I think we all have some family we want to say a thing or two too but anyways so then he's he said he's like I can't I can't control how people see me. And he's like, and then he's like, I can't control how you see me. I love Nathan. Nathan is just a sweetie pie. He's sweet, he's cute. He also looks like just a little, like I also just wanna pick him up and hug him. I don't even know how big or tall he is, but he just looks like a sweet guy who's just going through stuff and he's trying. He's trying and he's doing it. Like, look at him, he has a whole barber shop. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then, and then Issa's like, basically like, I can't act like I don't have feelings for you or like this is just a friendship or I only view a, view you as a friend. Um, and then Nathan's like, I see you more than a friend as well. But Issa said she has to be honest with herself and she thinks she was just scared. She was scared to get hurt again. She was scared for the other shoe to drop because obviously she jumped in again with Lawrence and she's like, let's do this. Oh my gosh. She probably thought like, this is it. Like, this is my partner for life. And then that huge, you know, the baby, like that huge shoe dropped. Is that what it's called? Shoe dropped. The foot dropped. It dropped. And she had to reevaluate and she had to rethink and she had to like, she thought like, no, that's not for her. And that hurt. Even though you're the one leaving this situation, it doesn't mean it doesn't hurt. So poor girl was hurt and she doesn't want to get hurt again with Nathan because Nathan also is wishy-washy sometimes. Like not wishy-washy, he has mental health issues, but he didn't handle it right. And that girl, remember that episode when she was like going crazy thinking about where Nathan was and then she was going, she was able to get into his room and trying to log into his laptop. It was like a mess. So yeah, she just doesn't want that to happen again. But anyways, let me know what you guys think about or thought about this episode. I really enjoyed it, like always. I love Insecure, I'm gonna miss it. I'm gonna miss it so much you don't even understand because it's just so beautiful just to see people that look like you on TV. Like, it means so much and I just don't take it for granted because to see these chocolate, dark-skinned black women be the center of this TV show too, like you don't see that, you don't see that. And I just love watching and just like seeing myself and for other girls to see themselves and seeing all these beautiful like skin tones and black people and just like, oh, all these shades. And it's just beautiful to see, but obviously especially seeing two dark skinned black women because obviously we know there's so, I could list, you know what? I even may do a video on this. Um, just showing like how in these shows in Hollywood, dark skinned black women get no fucking love. They get no love. And for the audience, who is a dark skinned black woman? You don't get to see yourself portrayed. And that shit is deep and it hurts and it, it, it weighs down on you when you don't see yourself also in the, in the viewpoint of a love interest or as a main character, you always have to be the side character, the friend, the funny friend, or the rude nurse. I'm just sick of it. And also I watched um, 
the latest movie, the Western movie with um, Idris Elba. The movie was fantastic. But then also you got to see the main character. His love interest was Zazie, who is incredible. I love her. But she wasn't meant for the role because the role was actually... Um, actually taken from a, the real life person and she was a very tall woman she was full figured and she was very dark skinned and instead they they casted Zazzy as that role and she's a beautiful mixed girl but we we need to see our people we need to see all shades represented we need to see all everything represented and we need to see them as much as we see See the white man, the white woman, the white like straight man and white straight woman portrayed, the blonde and blue eyed people. We need to see people that look like us to make the world just feel like more equal and to make us feel like we are deserving of love because when you constantly see that there's nobody on the screen that looks like you, year after year like I feel for the young black girls because I was that young black girl and like because I've done work on myself I'm able to be like you know I am beautiful but when you're the only fucking person telling yourself you're beautiful that shit's hard so we so insecure is just so important and I just think it's just such an incredible show and it's just it's it's just okay that's all I can say is it's I feel like Oprah. Ah! Anyways. Okay, guys. I will talk to you later. I'll see you for episode five, but this was a great one. Leave a comment down below of what you felt, what you even felt about my rant or anything like that. Okay. Bye, guys.